Hey guys, so over the past few days I've been working through various different configurations trying to find the most stable way to boot Windows 8.1 alongside a Linux based distribution and today I'm going to be sharing some top tips on how you might achieve this as well. Now this is by no means a comprehensive list and this is also not going to be a tutorial on how to dual boot. I'm working on that video now uh, as we speak, well not as we speak, I'm actually doing this video now as we speak, but uh, yes there will be a video shortly showing a demonstration on how to dual boot windows with Linux. I've had quite a lot of requests for that. But today, today I'm just going to be sharing some top tips, things you might want to do or things you might want to avoid um, to ensure the stability of your dual booting system. Now what I've tested this on is Linux Mint 17.1 alongside Windows 8.1. Now you can uh, be assured that most modern Linux distributions are going to work the same way and this will also apply to Windows 8. You can also apply it to Windows 7 and earlier versions, although with Windows 7 and earlier versions you'll given a lot more flexibility when it comes to dual booting. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be using a lot of terms that I'm probably not going to explain the definitions of. So uh, for certain terms, I'm going to put uh, links or actually I'm going to put extracts from uh, various definitions down in the description below so that you can just sort of scan down and, and, and work out what I'm talking about. If I've omitted anything that you would like further explanation on, let me know in the comments section and then I will add that to the description of this video as well. But uh, there's going to be some technical terms which I'm not going to explain actually in this physical video here. Okay, so the first one, the uh, first top tip I would recommend is to use separate physical hard disk drives, not to partition your hard disk drive in, uh, in half. So partition of, partitioning, of course, is dividing your hard disk into various different parts, and then you could install your Linux distribution on one part and your Windows distribution on another. That is something that I wouldn't recommend. I'd actually recommend just going out and buying a separate hard disk drive. Um, there's going to be one distribution, either Windows or Linux, that use more more than the other. So in that case, then I would recommend you just buy like a smallish uh, hard disk drive. They're not particularly expensive, but you do gain a lot in terms of stability. If one distribution completely screws up the hard disk drive, which has happened to me on numerous occasions, thank you very much, Windows 8.1, which has actually inspired me to do this video, um, then yes, it is just, it's, it's good to have your, um, the operating systems as far apart from each other as possible so that one can't interfere with the other. Um, again, you can theoretically do this while partitioning, but it, to me it's a stability issue. And if you want to be as stable as possible, two physical hard disk drives will always be better than two separate partitions. Okay, so or three if you want to put your home on a separate partition as well. Um, so yeah, the reason for this is that Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 um, use really strange ways of managing the hard disk drive, which are particularly hostile to the idea of dual booting. Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 and earlier uh, versions of Windows to some extent basically assume that the Windows partition is the only distribution uh, on the uh, on the computer at all and obviously in the case of dual booting that's not the case. A lot of people will um, encourage you or, or will recommend that you install your Windows partition onto the first hard disk drive that your BIOS picks up but I'll cover that later on and make sure you, you watch that if you're if you're if you're led to believe such a thing. Okay, so uh, what Windows 8 and 8.1 do is that there is a function called fast boot. And if this is enabled, uh, when your computer shuts down, and I say when you think your computer shuts down, in, you know, when you select shut down in a full state, what it actually does is it puts into a very, very deep hibernation, which is almost like being completely shut off, but just a little bit awake, almost like almost like putting your computer into a, into a coma, as it were. And um, what that does is that kind of locks up the hard disk drive and makes it inaccessible from uh, any other distribution. So if you've got files on your Windows 8 or 8.1 partition that you want to access through your Linux partition, then you can't do that no matter how much root permissions you have, because that hard disk drive is still physically kicking even though it's you you thought you shut it down now you can disable fast boot f uh, the the fast boot function and you can do that going through the power settings in the control panel in windows but that being said when you update your system and you know how windows 8.1 and other previous versions of windows like to just update your system just whenever it feels like it and and, and it, it often doesn't give you a say um it'll expect you to reboot and then it'll expect you to reboot straight back into Windows um, and as such um, will use that weird type of hard disk drive management which can actually cause your hard drive to lock up. 
which then causes further problems, which leads me to point top tip number two. Do not install Windows 8.1 on the first partition of the first hard disk drive that your BIOS picks up. Uh, because of the way that Windows 8.1 manages its hard disk drives, it can often uh, lock the hard disk drive in unusual ways that are particularly hostile to dual booting, including making the master boot record unusable or unreadable on boot. Uh, so you want to make sure that you install your master boot record onto a Linux partition, because Linux-based operating systems are used to the idea of dual booting. So you want to make sure that your uh, at least a Linux-based partition is on the first partition of the first hard disk drive so that um, it can then load into the master boot record without uh, risk of it freezing up or being locked out. Now, even if you've got the fast boot feature turned off on Windows 8.1, uh, it's still possible that your hard disk drive may... Um, not shut down properly on shutdown this might be because it expects to do a particular um, type of upgrade on reboot or, or anything like that there are reasons that I, I don't even know why it sometimes just ignores uh, the proper shutdown command um, but Windows is one of those distributions that just sort of takes away control from you because it thinks it knows best when obviously in this case and in the case of dual booting it does not. Now this can be a little bit tricky to actually install Windows 8.1 onto because Windows 8.1 uh, pretends that no other operating systems exist other than itself and uh, as a result if it doesn't if it's not instructed to boot uh, to go onto the first partition picked up by your BIOS uh, it thinks that you're making a grave error and will refuse to do so so what I've managed to do to get around this is quite straightforward is to disable all other hard disk drives apart from the one you want to install Windows 8.1 on um, through your BIOS and you can usually do this by just pressing in my in my case it's you you press the delete key repeatedly when you boot up your machine and this allows you to see what order your hard disk drives are detected in so you can make sure you install to the right one and um, to actually disable and re-enable um, the various disk drives so that um, you can actually install 8.1 onto a secondary partition whilst it still thinks that it's being installed onto a primary one, onto the first one that gets picked up. And that way, what you can do is you can install your master boot record onto your first and primary partition, the first partition that your master boot record uh, picks up and that your BIOS picks up, and that would presumably be your Linux-based partition, unless you're running, say, a BSD or Open Solaris or whatever. And then you can and then you can boot your master you can put your master boot record right onto your first partition of your first hard disk drive and that will then indicate where you um uh where you, it, then it can basically load into grub and grub can actually then tell you right do you want to boot into windows do you want to boot into linux or whatever there is a possible solution if you are partitioning up your hard disk drive that you can actually have a separate partition for your um that you can boot in from I haven't actually tried this and again I wouldn't recommend it I would recommend just having two completely separate um, hard disk drives uh, because the way how Windows 8.1 manages hard disk drives in general it, it tends to want to take it over and, and it, again it wants to assume that it's the only operating system that exists so um, you can try it but it's certainly but but I would recommend against it because of the stability issue Okay, so top tip number three, and this is a top tip whether or not you're dual booting or not, or just it's a, it's a useful tool to have in your arsenal, is to get a um, boot repair disk. Now, a boot repair disk is an ISO that you can burn either onto a CD or onto a bootable USB or even onto an SD card or micro SD card or anything that you can, uh, you can boot into. Um, and what this does is that it um, boots into a live uh, operating system that's actually on the CD in question. And it, on that CD is a, is a piece of software called Boot Repair. Boot Repair is uh, a, a tool that can install your master boot record or reinstall your master boot record onto either all of your hard disk drives or a selected uh, hard disk drive partition or whatever. And it allows you so that once you install Windows uh, 8.1, which will overwrite your master boot record, it will basically just check all of your hard disk drives um, for operating systems. And then it will install uh, that list of operating systems via Grub onto your master boot record or all of your hard disk drives as well. You can have a copy of your um, master boot record on all of your hard disk drives. And that's, again, another, um, I guess you call it a backup or a, an issue of safety and, uh, for or whatever reason. 
and then uh, you can then boot into um, and then you can yeah boot back into Grub and then it will make sure that your your boot list is is up to date. Uh, so yeah, um, if you uh, and that's good for whatever reason. It just makes sure that when you boot up, you've got a you've got the correct list of distributions um, that you can choose which uh, distribution you want to boot into. Now, of course, in my case, it's a Linux distribution and a Windows distribution. But some people might want to be running, say, Arch for the bleeding edge software, and then they might have a Debian partition if they want a very nice stable uh, operating system. And then they might have Windows for when they need to run Windows stuff. So, you know, it, it's a good way to make sure that all of your distributions are being picked up on boot. Um, I will put, of course, I'll put a link to it down in the description, uh, and I'll put a link to the page um, that explains a little more about it as well so that you can get a bit of background. But like I say, it's just a good tool to have. I've got it in a, in a uh, I've burnt it to a DVD and I've put it in my diagnostics uh, tools um sort of wallet where I keep all other diagnostic tools like Gparted and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's it's essential to your arsenal because that way uh, if Windows decides that it wants to mess up or if, if Linux and Grub decide they want to mess up, you've got that, you can at least um, uh, get your, your master boot record back on track. Also on that CD, there is a uh, there's a uh, internet browser so that you can actually use it to Google um, whatever you might need to google or if you, you know to look up any kind of um look up any problems that you might be having as well it's a good backup utility to have although i'd have a, a i guess i'd have another live cd if i wanted anything more comprehensive than that but yeah for repairing your boot um master boot record it's an essential to have um and that way you don't have to worry about um install like installing onto a, 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 a an actual partition on your hard disk drive kind of assumes that you'll have access to it when you need it which isn't always guaranteed so definitely a must have um so i think that's um about the uh, yeah i think that's about all of the top tips which i can uh, offer you today like i said there is a tutorial in the mix on how to dual boot that's going to be a little bit newbie friendly this video of course is more for people who have been dual booting for a while and are curious about what uh, windows 8 or the, the risks that windows 8 and windows 8.1 might bring um but that being said um yeah, I've had no problems with it so far. Again, I will keep you updated. If you are, of course, unsure, or if you don't want to purchase a second hard disk drive, um, I would then recommend you perhaps stick to Windows 7 or uh, maybe even Windows Vista. I know that's a bit of a weird recommendation, but um, yeah, you might you, know, you might want to stay away from Windows 8 until you've got the ability to acquire an extra hard disk drive just for your Windows partition, because it is a bit of um it's it's a bit of a an asteroid i guess in in the sense that it might just mess up everything at a moment's notice but uh thanks very much for watching and uh, i got a little bit of announcement at the end of this video uh i have decided that this youtube channel is going to be exclusively um tech stuff so that's linux stuff that's open source stuff um and it's going to be just sort of like interesting browser add-ons that i pick up um, i'm going to focus on open source stuff as much as possible obviously some proprietary stuff will get thrown into the mix um but generally computery stuff this is going to be my channel where i talk about computery things if you wish to follow me for uh, other stuff where I talk about perhaps current events, politics. Uh, I'm going to move my fun with flags series over there. So I talk a little bit about geography and basically anything that's not computer related is going to go on my personal channel now. I'll put a link to it down in the description. But as always, links to all my important stuff are going to be on the channel page. So you just click on the Chris Ware digital name down underneath this video thank you uh, and also as well if you have made it all the way to the end of this video because this one's a little bit lengthy and it's a little bit in depth as well feel free to ask any questions or suggest subject matter that is not tech related for my new channel if you want to go over there and check it so yeah if you've got any ideas for anything you'd like me to talk about then feel free to suggest them uh, down in the comment section below and as usual feel free to suggest tech topics as well because i get most of my ideas from from you guys when it comes to uh, tutorials and stuff like that thanks very much for watching that's about it from me today until next time, I have been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.